Hello everyone and welcome to Split Second. We would like to thank everyone for your constant support. We are closing the 10k subscriber mark, which means a lot to us, and we will do another giveaway once we reach that milestone. If you enjoy our content, feel free to subscribe, share it with your friends, or go a step further and become our patron. All the support goes towards producing good quality videos every week. For this week's pod, Lady brought Snoop Thar from Bad Dog, Surreal and Timmy T1000. Elder is on Cross Dragon's Corval's list with a personal tweak or two, Baal is piloting Famjis, Jeska and Ishai. And last but not least, David is on Seek Robot's Cody's list. Late won the die roll and kept his first hand, a mountain and a gemstone caverns for lands, with a mana vault and ragavan for ramp. Trinity can be detrimental in this matchup and so does Manglehorn, shutting down most of the fast mana and dockside lines. Lastly, Wandering Archaic is a newcomer that can generate a lot of value or simply stacks the table some more. Elder Mulliganed once and kept a Forest, Command Tower and Verdant Catacombs for lands, Finhorn Elves and Elves of Deep Shadow as Ramp and Witherbloom Apprentice as an alternate combo line. Lastly, Abrupt Decay can be key to remove some Staxi or Dangerous piece on the field. Baal also Mulliganed once and found a Lucky Jumpstone Caverns, alongside a Wooded Foothills, allowing for a turn 1 Talisman of Progress for Ramp. The deck runs Underworld Breach lines and he also has a Spell Seeker if he wants to pursue that line and Imperial Recruiter for another value card. Time Twister can be used early to disrupt his opponent's plans or later down the line if everything else fails, since it doesn't go well with Breach. Finally, David kept his first hand, allowing for a turn 1 Cody. City of Brass, Ancient Tomb and Soul Ring will be enough to get Cody and turn Fierce Guardianship online. Nature's Claim and Gamble are great to use alongside Cody's activation to find Profane Tutor into Ad Nauseam. With a Tainted Pack in hand, it doesn't need to dig so much for Thoracle and might get there really early. Ready for this match? Before the game starts, Paul announces his Gemstone Caverns, exiling an Imperial Recruiter. Late then starts his turn with a Mountain and casts the newcomer, Ragavan Nimble Pilferer. He passes an Elder Place and cracks a Verdant Catacombs for a Taiga, and casts Elves of Deep Shadow, finishing his turn as well. Baal plays a Wooded Foothills, cracking it for a Volcanic Island and casts a Talisman of Progress before passing. David plays an Ancient Tomb and casts Soul Ring, and just like that the book comes out of the shelf, Cody resolves and he passes. Late ponders for a second and then goes to combat. He sends Ragavan at Baal, triggering, getting a treasure and exiling a Bloodstained Mire. He then casts a Mana Crypt and plays a Gemstone Caverns. With it, he casts a Mana Vault, and he feels like a single bounce spell can allow the V to still go off, so he goes for a different line, casting a Manglehorn. It enters and the trigger targets Cody. However, the V responds with his top deck, deflecting SWAT, redirecting the trigger to Mana Vault. Late taps it for a 3 and then casts Trinosphere. However, Cody being around still allows the V to respond with a fierce guardianship. Latest Sadness goes on the stack and resolves, so you're on Elder's turn. He plays a Command Tower and casts a Survival of the Fittest before ending his turn. Baal plays a Scalding Tarn and cracks it for an island to play around Moon Effects. He casts Ishai Ojutai Dragon Speaker and passes. David starts his turn with the City of Brass and activates Cody for What have I got? He casts Nature's Claim on the Survival of the Fittest, triggering Cody and Ishai. Elder responds by activating Survival of the Fittest to find a Dockside Extortionist. Cody's Semi Cascade then resolves and David gets a Profane Tutor that he can cast until the end of turn. Mangalorn is unfortunately stopping him from getting access to most of his fast rocks to win through Ad Nauseam. So he casts Gamble, triggering Ishai. He tutors for a snap so he can bounce Mangalhorn and still have mana for Ad Nauseam and more. Ball rolls the die and… well, it's an Entomb. The odds were not on this side, with just 3 cards in hand, so he then casts his Profane Tutor, triggering Ishai again and he still goes for Ad Nauseam before passing. Late rolls for the Crypt and loses it. He jumps to combat, sending Ragavan and Manglehorn at the Vid, exiling a City of Traitors and getting a treasure. He plays a Forest and casts his commander, Rurik Thar the Unbowed, triggering Ishai and further nailing David's coffin. He passes and Elder plays a forest as well. He exiles an Elvish Spirit Guide for green and also brings his big bad boy, Korvald. He triggers Ishai, slowly making it bigger, and when it enters, he sacrifices the forest, putting a plus one plus one counter on it and drawing a card. He finishes his turn and Baal draws and casts a spell seeker. It enters and he tutors for an ephemerate. He then plays a tapped steam vents and attacks the vid with Ishai for six before passing the turn. David is on a tight corner, so he simply draws and passes as well. Late still loses the crit roll and jumps straight into combat again. He sends Rurik Thar at David and Ragavan and Manglehorn at Baal. Baal blocks Ragavan with Spellseeker and David blocks Rurik Thar with Cody. 
while passes priority on blockers, expecting to react at any attempt from the Vid to cast ad nauseum. However, after some pondering, the Vid also passes without any action, so damage resolves. In late to second main phase, he casts Wandering Archaic, triggering Ishai and passing after that. Helder plays it by you and thinks for a bit before simply passing, holding some tricks up his sleeve. Baldross, and after some pondering, casts his Jeska, taking 6 damage from Rurik Thar. He uses her zero ability to triple Ishai's combat damage. He sends Ishai at late for lethal 21, as a way to remove Rurik Thar from the field as late blocks. His main idea was to time twist in his second main phase, but his drawn mana vault would enter tapped, so he simply passes. And on his end step, the vid casts a Vampiric Tutor, paying 2 extra to deny late a copy, and growing Ishai one more. He searches for a command tower to the top. However, still in Bal's end step, Bal fires a Brain Freeze, triggering Wandering Archaic, but late decides not to copy it. Bal sends the original at the vid and one copy at late, depriving him of good stuff like Sylvan Library and Oof. We actually miss one Storm Trigger from the Vampiric Tutor. The vid sadly does the draw go and we're rolling for late script, finally not taking damage. He goes to combat sending Mangahorn, a Cheska and the Archaic at the vid. On his second main phase, he casts Green Sun Zenith for 3, triggering Ishai and Ella responds with a Worldly Tutor, so he doesn't need to pay 2 for the Archaic, as it would simply be shuffled by the Zenith. Ishai triggers again and Ella finds a Tamor Saber Tooth, preparing some Dockside lines. Late then finds a Selvala, Heart of the Wilds, and passes. On his end step, however, Elder fires an abrupt decay at Manglehorn, triggering Ishai and the Wandering Archaic, so Late copies it and targets Paul's Talisman. Helder then gets to his turn and casts Dockside Extortionist, triggering Ishai and getting only two treasures for it. He cracks one for green, triggering Corvold and putting a plus one plus one counter on it and drawing a card. He then cracks his second treasure for black for another counter and drawn card. He plays a Badlands and casts a Vicious Seer, triggering Ishai again, and then uses his last green for a Deathrite Shaman, triggering Ishai again and still decides to play defense and simply pass. Bal now casts his Mana Vault and sends Ishai at late to put him in check and be able to kill Rurik Thar through combat if needed. In his second main phase, he casts Time Twister, triggering the Archaic and not paying. Late decides to copy it, hoping to see 14 cards and find a Pyroblast for Ishai. Everyone resolves two Time Twisters and then Bal plays a Tundra and passes. David finds a whole different game plan and plays an Exotic Orchard, and casts a Carpet of Flowers, triggering Ishai. He goes to his second main phase, adding 4 brown mana to cast Cody, triggering Ishai again and passing. Leitu manages to win the Crypt Roll again. He plays a Taiga and casts a Sol Ring, triggering Ishai. He then activates Selvala to add 4 green thanks to the Wandering Archaic, and casts Rurik Thar again. Ishai triggers and the Ogre eats the field. He then casts Destiny Spinner, triggering Ishai again, and then attacks Bal with his Wandering Archaic before passing. Helder gets to his turn and plays a Marsh Flats cracking and triggering Corvold to draw, and then searches for an untapped Overgrown Tomb, taking two more. He now casts a Fire Covenant, paying for life and targeting Wandering Archaic, triggering Ishai, Wandering Archaic and Rurik Thar, taking six more damage and not paying for the Archaic, enabling Late to copy it and targeting Elder Vicious Seer. In response, Elder activates Deathrite, exiling his Marsh Flats for one black mana and then activates Vicious Seer, sacrificing his Elves of Deep Shadow, drawing a card from Corvold and then scrying. He does the same with Deathrite and then with Vicious Seer itself, further digging for outlets. He now casts a Witherbloom Apprentice, treating Ishai. The table wonders if he goes for a Chain of Smog, and then he casts a Lotus Petal, triggering Ishai and Rurik Thar, further signaling Smog plus Veil mana. He fires a Chain of Smog targeting himself and triggering Witherbloom, Ishai and Rurik Thar, taking 6 damage, growing Ishai and gaining 1 from Witherbloom while pinging each opponent. He copies the Chain, triggering Witherbloom again and discards 2 more cards. He does it again, triggering Magecraft as well. He chooses to copy Chain of Smog again, triggering Witherbloom, gaining 1 more, and holding priority, casts a Reign of Filth, triggering Witherbloom, Corvold as he cracks the petal, Ishai and Rurik Thar. This is a good way to recoup some cards after the chain loop. However, in response, Bal fires a Fluster Storm, dividing the big storm count between Chain and the Reign of Filth, stopping Elder in his tracks. Bal takes 6 from Rurik Thar and Elder decides to pass. Note that in this stormy turn, some of Witherbloom drains were missed and our life totals were inaccurate, and by this point, each player had 2 more life than we thought. We will now update life totals to show what each player had to better represent players' decisions. Bal gets to his turn and takes one from the vault. He plays a Spire of Industry and casts Grand Abolisher. 
After some thinking, he sends Ishai at Elder to kill this Korvald, and then passes. David gets to his turn and simply plays a Volcanic Island, and passes, as his Cody is now stopping him from going off with Oracle. Lacey's crit decides to slap him this time around, and he goes straight into combat. He sends Destiny Spinner at Helder and Rurik Thar at Bal. No one blocks, and everyone's closing the red zone. In his second main, he casts a Reclamation Sage, triggering Ishai, and when it enters, he targets Cody, unknowingly doing the Vida a favor. He plays a Bloodstained Mire and passes. As Elder is now trying to recoup from Semi Hellbent, he plays an Undergrowth Stadium and casts an Infernal Plunge, sacrificing Witherbloom as an additional cost. Ishai and Rurik Thar trigger, and he is now able to cast his Corvold once again, triggering Ishai. When it enters, he sacrifices his Overgrown Tomb, drawing a card, and passes. Bal takes another ping from the Vault and simply passes. David goes to his turn, adding 4 blue with his carpet and casts Thassa's Oracle, triggering Ishai. It resolves and he responds to the trigger with a Tainted Pact, triggering Rurik Thar and Ishai. Bal can fight over counter from David, so late fires a card of calling for 2, triggering his own Rurik Thar and Ishai. He gets a sneaky vexing Shusher to the field. Bal then responds with a muddled mixture on the Tainted Pact, taking 6 from the Rurik Thar. And since David cannot fight over it, he simply resolves the Oracle trigger, leaving one on top, ending his turn. Late gets to in his crit roll and goes to combat. We're now reaching the 3 hour mark and a bit tired, as Late misses Ruiz life totals and sends Rurik Thar at Elder and Spinner and Shusher at David. Dockside and Thoracle champ and then Late passes. Elder plays a Spire Garden and feels like not attacking to keep on the defensive, but Paul says he's not going to attack him, since he can't cast any non-creature spells so Elder goes to combat and sends Corvald at David. The dragon triggers and he sacrifices his Spire Garden, growing Corvald to 6 lethal damage and drawing him a card. In his second main phase, he artcasts a Simeon Spirit Guide, which is a surprise to see battle as his elvish cousin from episode 41. He passes and on Bal's draw step, he takes another ping from the vault. He goes straight into combat, sending his huge bird at late, who has no option but to block. In his second main phase, Bal casts a Mystical Tutor for a final fortune. He then casts Ponder to draw the final fortune. He casts Lotus Petal, followed by Jeweled Lotus and then Talisman of Creativity, before casting his last card, Final Fortune. He goes to his final turn and untaps his Mana Vault in his upkeep, not to die. He casts his Jeska that enters with three counters, and he immediately removes them to Bolt Leite, Elder and Isimian Spirit Guide. He proceeds to combat, sending Grand Abolisher at Elder and a mere 27-27 Ishai at late for a total of 41 commander damage. That should do it, right? GG. Thank you for joining us for today's match, everyone. Rurik Thar showed its greatest strength at taxing Storm-centric strats, but in the end, a huge untouched Ishai managed to kill commanders and players all around. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons, and especially Izanagi, Stefan, TG Rap, Mike Burr, Aajimo, Uncrustable, Drunken Housecat, V, RJ, and Heated Chill, our stack breakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing, or by becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other Commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH-related matters, join us on Discord. Join us again next week for a new set of commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then!